Hi everyone, welcome to another video by Sinta. I'm Rajdeep, and today we'll look at a problem from number theory, in that it's a Diophantine equation. Like that's the final act of the problem. Uh, but as in line with our previous videos, the solution is not going to be using the standard tools of Diophantine theory. Rather, we'll use methods from calculus and those of the theory of polynomials to solve this problem. So let's get into it. Right. So this problem is from the CMI BSC entrance of 20 22nd May uh, 2022. There were two exams this year because of some issues. So this is the one from 22nd May. The problem is B5, subjective fifth problem. And what the question says is that two distinct real numbers R and S are said to be are said to form a good pair R comma S if R cube plus S square is equal to S cube plus R square. There's some stuff that you know, needs to get done in the first part, but really uh, one could think of the final act of the problem as question two, which show which is to show that there are infinitely many good pairs of rational numbers. And so that makes this a Diophantine equation, right? Diophantine equation is a polynomial equation where we expect rational or integer solutions. But we won't use the standard tools of Diophantine theory to solve this, especially because the question doesn't ask us to. It tells us to go through another route, and we'll see that this route is actually quite effective. So let's see what the first part says. Find a good pair, a comma l, with the largest possible value of l and find a good pair s comma b with the smallest value of s and for every good pair c comma d other than the two you found show that there is a third real number e such that b comma a and c comma a are good pairs okay the first thing that we'd want to do is to reinterpret what it means for a pair to be a good pair and that's really where like the first sort of trick is in that Instead of working with this slightly obtuse form, which is r cube plus s square is equal to s cube plus r square, we'll make it more homogeneous, if you will. And we'll make this r cube minus r square is equal to s cube minus s square. And now suddenly, we're looking at just different values of one polynomial function, which is f of x equals x cube minus x, x square. This is a polynomial. And... So now we have a reinterpretation. R and S form a good pair if and only if f of R is equal to f of S. That's it. And now we have we are asked to find different kinds of good pairs. Really, what we want to do is look at the graph of this function. Uh, and polynomials are, you know, well known to be easy to graph and uh, different values of the input that result in the same value of the output are just intersections of a horizontal line, as we'll come to see. So this is a polynomial and what is this polynomial? It's x squared into x minus 1. And so it has a double root at 0 and a single root at 1. And so let's draw this out. Right, and so there's a single root at one, and so this could be a sort of a quick way of how to draw graphs of polynomials. If I have x squared into x minus one, I know that if I take very large values of x, I'll start with large positive values, and so I'll come from infinity and I'll cross one because it's a single root. This is kind of how wavy curve method works, if you know what that is. But, and since it's a double root at zero, instead of crossing again, we kind of bounce off that root. And so this is what the graph of this function looks like. Right. And so now, how do we interpret this condition? Fr is equal to fs. As usual, we interpret this by looking at intersections of a horizontal line. Each of these values, whatever these points are, Corresponding to this, 
this and this all have the same value of f of x right that's what it means we're simply reading off the data of a graph and so and this kind of already tells us we saw three points of intersection we all we already see that you know for given good pairs there's actually three good pairs that we get we're kind of seeing how the problem should break down almost immediately here but if you want the pair with the largest value we are really just looking at this point right and so the two values uh the two numbers r and s for which f has two values and we get the largest possible value of r uh of one of the numbers is in fact the pair 0 comma 1 right corresponding to the value 0 so for both of these values the value of f is 0 f of 0 is equal to f of 1 is equal to 0 we wanted the pair with the largest possible value of the x coordinate so we simply went here any point with an x coordinate more than 1 will not have more than one intersection uh so will not have a repeated value of f we just get unique values and the same goes for past this and so this in fact wherever this is is the smallest value and so this is the largest uh p with f of p is equal to f of q for some other q and wherever this is this is the smallest p such that f of p is equal to f of q for some other q other is the important part right a good pair has to be distinct so so the concern that we have is between these values of x right i will clean up the board a bit uh yeah so we found the largest uh the the good pair with the largest value and to find the smallest value we will simply see where this local minima is the local mini minima will be a point with where the derivative vanishes what is f prime x f prime x is equal to 3x square minus 2x and if we want this to be 0 we're just asking for either x is equal to 0 which we've already covered right that's the point of local maxima we don't want that so that just gives us that x is equal to 2 by 3 this point at this point we have the local minima and so we simply look for the other point with the same value of whatever this is and so what is this value f of 2 by 3 is simply and you can plug it in and check is just minus 4 by 27 so we're looking for the other point with uh value minus 4 by 27 it's not very hard to see uh essentially what we're trying to solve for is that um x cube minus x squared is equal to minus 4 by 27 uh and this is not particularly hard to solve you could also guess your way into this uh the value of x the other value of x for this for which this happens is x is equal to minus 1 by 3 and so the pair and this is that this is this value right this is minus 1 by 3 and so the first part is almost over and so our smallest good pair in terms of one of the coordinates is minus 1 by 3 comma 2 by 3 this is the smallest and this is the largest right corresponding to this value of f and this value of f respectively okay what happens at every value of f between minus 4, 4 by 27 and 0 for all k in the open interval minus 4 by 27 comma 0 the horizontal line y is equal to k right so we'll choose a slightly different value say in in blue for every value between 0 and minus 4 by 27 we get three intersections this is visible from the graph and so 
Well, let's choose a different color. These are the three intersections, and they correspond to three different values uh, of x, which have the same value of f of x. And these are all of our good pairs. For all k between minus 4 by 27 and 0, both excluded between these two values strictly, f of k, uh, y is equal to k, has three intersections with the graph of y is equal to x cubed minus x. And these three intersections correspond to three good pairs for every such value, which is exactly what the question was asking us for. For every good pair C, D other than the two we found, there is a third real number E such that D comma E and C comma E are good pairs. So for every every good pair in between these two, and those are all the good pairs, since for every other value of X, you have only one value of F of X. You have only one X which achieves that value of F of X. And so let's not mess up our board anymore. Yeah, uh, at, a, at any good pair is one of these two. So say this and this is a good pair. And so you get three, two more good pairs, which is uh, this and this and this and this. We're just beating around the bush here. Any, any more explanation is only going to make it make things less clear. But yeah, that's kind of the point. And now the second part is show that there are infinitely many good pairs of rational numbers. This actually follows very quickly because really all we want is for these numbers, these x values, to be rational. That's just fine. Choose a rational number in between, say, minus 1 by 3 and 0. Choose a rational number. So for part 2, choose a rational number. between minus 1 by 3 and 0 and just look at the line y is equal to say a rational number r look at y is equal to f of r so just choose a rational number in between I'll just draw the graph again for clarity Great. Uh, and so this is our last point, our smallest point, where we get a good pair. And this is our sort of the largest point where we get a good pair, the, the left part of the pair. And just choose a rational number in between these two values, say r. Look at f of r and just consider this line. I know for sure that this point and this point, so this number and this number, I say S and T, both S and T will be rational. Why is that? Both S and T are rational. Why? Well, the the um, we have a rational point on a rational line. That's why. Since uh, the line, the, this line is y is equal to f of r is equal to r cube minus r square, which is rational. So you have a rational point on a rational line, which means that every other point on that line is going to have rational coordinates. This is just using the two point form. So every point on this line, any point you choose, not just those two points s and t, any other point has rational coordinates. So in particular, uh, yeah, y is equal to f of r has only rational points. And also the intersection with the graph of uh, y is equal to x cube minus x square, that's a rational equation. That's more reason. Uh, yeah, and so S and T are rational, and that's why R comma S and R comma T 
our rational good pairs. And since we could have chosen R to be any rational between minus 1 by 3 and 0, since there's infinitely many such rational numbers, we get infinitely many rational solutions. And that's it. So here was a problem on which seemingly was diophantine in nature. And yet we've only used essentially the theory of polynomials to solve them, not really any number theoretic tools. So it's a number theoretic setting and a non-number theoretic solution. And I hope you can appreciate solutions like this moving forward. Hope you had fun. Bye-bye.